So what does that mean? That means I now have about 50 rex loops at my disposal. Drums are playing. I can press this key, black key to go back. And for our other loop, I have the two keys immediately to the left. So as a DJ would do it, I would um, leave the left loop playing and adjust or you know choose a different loop for the right. Crossfade back over, change the other one so that you don't hear the jump, and then when I switch back over to it, there it is. Slick, huh? Now it'll continue to cycle through this directory every time you press a key, it'll jump ahead in one until it hits the end, at which point it'll go to the next directory, which might be house or RB. It could really throw off your beat, so be careful with that. Um, just try to go forward as much as you go back. Probably best is just to learn learn the highest number there. It's uh, 36. So I, I really have a ton of loops here that I can play with. Okay. Now, one thing I'm not going to do is hit stop. If I hit stop, when I hit play again, nothing's going to happen. Everything here depends on Rex loops inside a combinator, and the only way to keep them going is to hit preview. I'm not going to use anything that would send those notes to the track. Um, two reasons. One is that I've only got the one track, which is Combinator, so I can't have two Rexes taking the same notes. Uh, the rhythm's not going to match up. And the other reason is that if I switch the pattern, the notes are going to persist, which means that the new pattern is not going to sync up. So we're doing everything today without, without the sequencer. So let's continue. We have a few instruments going on. I've got my kill for the uh, drums, which does just that, just terminates the sound immediately, but that's a bit rough. I'm going to do something here to make it a little smoother, give me some options here. So what I'm going to do is create a RV7000. It automatically puts it on send. One, I know I'm not going to toggle it or twiddle it or anything, I'm going to do something special with it, which is to map it from send 4 to input channel 14 on the mic, or mixer. this would probably sound best with some echo rather than reverb. Yeah, it's perfect. So, how do we get this to sound the way we want it to? We don't we don't want reverb all the time. I'm going to drop it down. Just below the threshold of hearing. And that might do well enough just to leave it like that, but I'm going to map this level CV in back to our same spider CV that we dealt with earlier. I'm going to use a positive signal this time, that's all. Now notice if I, if I hit it right on the beat, which is the natural tendency, it's going to cut that off. So I'm going to ease up on the mod envelope attack. There we go, perfect. So if I hit the note right on the beat, still get that nice reverb tail. So that gives us a lot of flexibility. Keep in mind that it does apply itself to both drums. I thought so. Huh. Oh, right. Fix. Uh, find the level that works best for you. Keep in mind that these patterns are not always going to be the same, and some will be louder than others. So, what else can we do to give ourselves more flexibility, more control, and a better range of sounds? Well, one thing, we're going to add a few more Rexes. You can never have too many Rexes. So, um, I'm using pretty much everything in the factory sound bank here, which is, is good for getting the initial inspiration to write a song. Whatever you do, don't try to pass off these beats as your own. It's just something you can use either for a live performance to generate a unique beat, or, um, you know, if Probably the best way to do this would be to have separate audio recording equipment or to run, you could even run Audacity in the background, record your session, and then edit out the good parts. 
So we got two more channels here, two more Rexes. They're playing. Which is a problem. What we need to do is put more gates on these suckers. We're going to use the same trick we did before. And I'm going to run out of time, so let me pause it. And what you want to do is create a subtractor in the same fashion, but this time we can connect it directly. Mod envelope output to the level, crank that level all the way up, and make sure the sustain is the only thing you see. Um, actually, depending on your taste, you can, you can play with the attack a bit. That will give you a more rounded sound. And what I'd recommend doing for the fills, let's give them a little bit of reverb. And this time we don't want it gated. So let's just give it about halfway for both of those, whoops, both of those Rexes. There we go. So what did we achieve? The answer is that if I... I leave them in preview mode. They don't play until I hit it. Until I hit a key. But we still need to tweak this. What we need to do is assign again these subtractors to individual notes. Now this process is starting to make sense, isn't it? I'm going to use the next available white key to trigger each respective rex. And then I'm going to go down to each respective rex and I'm going to assign an override. All right, had a bit of a crash. Um, I'm not really sure where I left off. But um, to get right back into it, I showed you how to set up these gates so that you can play an instrument or a rex loop using the keyboard. And um, simple crossfaders. Now, I've gone ahead and pretty much filled up my rack. I think I've got 25 instruments in one combinator. Uh, two drums, two fills. And uh, one, one drum, or rather one bass line, which I can control with a knob. Turn it on, turn it off, or rather change the volume. Um, I kind of like to EQ out the mid-range for the fills, just to leave a bit of room for whatever vocals, whatever people are doing on the mic. And um, since I don't have the liberty of changing my drum or my bass line, I had to kind of vary it up using some phasers and unison to make it make it really come alive. So, um, this has been phase two. I know you're probably tired of hearing me talk and watching a stupid combinator over and over again, but um, stick around for phase three and we'll see what kind of sounds we can get out of it. This is going to be good. Oh, one last thing. Don't forget that you can also set remote overrides to control tempo, which might be useful. Um, Doing so would be like hit, you know, hit C sharp to go down one beat per minute, or uh, D sharp to go up one beat per minute, and you can kind of uh, bounce back and forth gradually using that. All right, I'll be right back.